Hello, I'm Kim Stafford, and I'm here again with PIMCO Group CIO Dan Iveson to give you an inside look at some of the recent discussions taking place within PIMCO's Investment Committee, or IC. Thank you for joining us, Dan. Thanks, Kim. There's been tremendous focus on central bank activity, including how long the Fed may take to cut rates if U.S. inflation remains sticky. We just published our cyclical outlook, and one of the main themes was around increasing divergence among economies, both in terms of monetary policy and growth. So what, how is this for divergence playing out, and what are the investment opportunities? Sure, let's, let's start with growth. Um, the U.S. economy in particular uh, is exhibiting a lot of growth uh, resiliency, uh, a lot of eco economic momentum. Uh, and apparently the U.S. economy is uh, less sensitive to the interest rate increases we've seen so far. Uh, outside the United States, uh, much different picture. Uh, you are um, seeing some signs of more material weakening uh, across economies uh, in Europe. Uh, the UK is an example. What we think uh, that will do is allow central banks uh, to ease policy uh, outside the US, perhaps off cycle, uh, and not necessarily in a more synchronized fashion um, with the central bank here in this country. And of course, that provides attractive opportunities. Uh, in addition to economic fundamentals now, when you look at global yields, uh, they're quite attractive. Uh, they hadn't been attractive for a long period of time, and they're, they're looking good uh, currently. In terms of central bank policy, we do think finally, after the repricing we've seen year to date, that the forward curves, uh, or what's embedded in terms of market expectations, are pretty close to what the Fed uh, will likely do. And we do think that the Fed probably cuts rates later this year. Perhaps they cut rates a couple of times this year in terms of our base case thinking. But with economic growth strong, uh, with uh, inflation uh, stubbornly high, uh, there are risks that the central bank doesn't go at all. There's even 10, 20% chance type risks that they have to tighten um, this cycle as well. So a lot of uncertainty, but what's been great for active fixed income is that this volatility, uh, these less synchronized cycles, are providing great opportunities to diversify portfolios and to target these markets for alpha gener generating opportunities. You mentioned bond yields rising in re recent weeks given elevated inflation and the markets pulling back you know, their expectations for, for rate cuts maybe later this year. What are the implications for rising yields and how is that an investment opportunity for clients? Sure, from a longer term perspective, yields look very, very attractive. Uh, nominal yields, you know, now, you know, back up in the 5% area in the intermediate portion of the curve. Or even if you want to protect against inflation and you look at real yields, you know, real yields comfortably above 2% look very attractive from a historical perspective. And when you step back and look at fixed income valuations uh, from a longer term perspective, uh, 7 to 8% high quality bond yields look very attractive versus public equities. Uh, in fact, you're getting uh, a public equity type return with a much better bounded overall profile, and seven to eight percent type yields in a high quality bond portfolio have historically looked very attractive versus cash. So, you know, this is a you know time where we don't think you can guarantee that cash rates are going to be at five or five and a half percent much longer. And I think that's typically the time where extending out the curve, locking in these very attractive yields. Over the short term now, our thinking is that after the sell-off we've witnessed more recently, it's time to get back to a neutral or even a slight overweight position uh, to interest rate risk uh, across most portfolios we manage. And we're doing that not only in the United States market, but doing it through diversifying purchases of other higher quality uh, government bonds in areas like Australia, Canada, even the UK as an example. So we do think from a tactical perspective now after the recent sell-off, uh, perhaps it's a bit overdone and we think the prospects for uh, more stable yields around these levels or even uh, a drop in yields later this year are looking better and better. So attractive income with uh, attractive total return potential as well. Great. You talked about elevated yields can be a boon for investors, as you just described, but they can also pose risks for borrowers. What are the investment implications for higher for longer rates for borrowers and credit markets? And where is this also creating opportunities for investors? Higher base rates are creating challenges in certain areas of the economy. Uh, we've seen the direct impact on regional banks that have some challenges within the commercial real estate area. We're also beginning to see further signs of deterioration in areas like commercial real estate in some of the private credit sectors as well. What those sectors have in common is that a lot of the funding is done in the floating rate markets. And with these higher um, short-term rates that are gonna stay higher for longer, you'll continue to see some deterioration. And that of course presents opportunity for uh, new sources of capital. So we do think that you'll see 
um, some more challenges, perhaps even at an accelerating rate as we get into the end of this year and into early 25, especially if you see some uh, economic weakening. And you described potential new sources of capital. What are the opportunities that you're seeing there? Yeah, th there are opportunities acro across the spectrum. Uh, you know, in the public markets now, you've seen with the you know increased volatility within the equity markets, so the geopolitical um, risks. Uh, some spread widening uh, and some uh, interesting opportunities cropping up in just the traditional uh, corporate credit markets. Also, uh, an increased pace of selling from regional banks, from other holders of risk across the commercial real estate spectrum, riskier segments like office, but also seeing you know, more interesting opportunities even in the multifamily space as well. And then asset-backed exposure in general. We're very overweight that exposure across PIMCO funds. We still think seasoned lending to consumers is the most resilient and attractive area of the credit universe. Uh, and these opportunities can be targeted both within traditional mutual funds, as well as, as more aggressive, uh, higher returning vehicles uh, as well. Well, thank you very much, Dan. And thanks to all of you for joining us. We'll see you next time.